uh, more email feedback before we get to the show. And this one is so good. This one is uh, is my favorite. I know we're not supposed to have favorites. Each and every email is very important to me, just like all of my kids. But uh, you're going to like this one a lot. It says Tony, and I did get permission from the, uh, the author of this email. Tony, therapy is like a bathroom in the middle of a long run. They already have me right there. I've got plenty of stories about bathrooms in the middle of a long run. Uh, but the person goes on to say, just uh, just wait to let you know you're making a difference in my life. My wife first introduced me to your podcast a year or so during a rough period of time for both of us. Discussing your episodes has broken the ice for some much needed conversations between us, which I'm so grateful for. I really am. Um, back to the email. That alone has been amazing. I'm using BetterHelp, thanks to you. I live in a small town. Let me just say, that would be betterhelp.com slash virtual couch. Please, please go there. If you're going to check, uh, take a look at betterhelp.com, please go to betterhelp.com slash virtual couch. It really helps the podcast. But he says, I'm using BetterHelp thanks to you. I live in a small town and the counselor options are slim. Plus, I never saw myself as somebody who needed therapy. I came close a few times to setting up appointments, but I always backed out. BetterHelp.com slash virtual couch is so easy. Before you can have a second thought, they have you matched up. I love that because the uh, that process is very easy on BetterHelp.com. The barrier to entry is so low. I've been using it for a few weeks now, and I know it's going to make a difference in my life. Now to explain my crude analogy. My wife and I are training for a marathon. During the long run, we were catching up and I was telling her about my experience with BetterHelp. A few miles later, we were passing a bathroom. I tried to tell myself I could tough it out and I didn't want to stop and break my rhythm. Boy, have I been there. One of these days, I'm going to tell a story about uh, why I hold a Strava record in the town of Davis during a one particular one mile stretch of a half marathon that has to do with exactly this concept. But that'll be a very vulnerable uh, story for me. Back to the email. But I tried to tell myself I could tough it out and didn't want to stop and break my rhythm. I told myself I was tougher than that, but I stopped. After, I ran faster, felt better, and was glad I stopped. Therapy is the same. I was telling myself I wasn't that guy and that I could tough it and that I could tough it out. Now that I'm going, I feel better and uh, it's worth the brief pause on life. Keep up the good work. So thank you for that email. Again, these are coming in pretty regularly now and I'm grateful for that. So please go to betterhelp.com slash virtual couch. And uh, just know that uh, that BetterHelp.com, over 500,000 people have already signed up, done this before you as well. Um, they're going to BetterHelp.com slash virtual couch, getting the help they need, even the help that they didn't know they need, as we learned about in this email today. There's a broad range of expertise in the counselor network that might not be available in local areas. Uh, it's available for clients worldwide. You can log in to your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You get timely and thoughtful responses. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room, even though my waiting room is very nice. I will admit that, but uh, but some some aren't. Or you're, you, might, you don't want to run into somebody you know, but BetterHelp will assess your needs, match it with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can often start communicating in less than 24 hours. And uh, they also have scholarships. So if you are struggling financially, but you really want that help, um, betterhelp.com slash virtual couch, go through there, sign up, and uh, you will find out that there are a lot of um, options for you on betterhelp.com slash virtual couch, even if you are struggling financially. And, uh, and I actually have coming up later this week, I have one of the um, a, a kind of a big deal at betterhelp.com. And they're coming on to talk about the whole um, experience of BetterHelp. And I'm really excited for you to hear that interview. It, it, it's it's going to sound a little bit advertising, but man, we get into the nuts and bolts of how it works and uh, signing up for accounts and the way the therapists work and all that. So I'm, I'm really excited to share that interview coming up later this week. Um, there's a special offer for Virtual Couch listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash virtual couch. So what are you waiting for? Go sign up today. Coming up on today's episode of The Virtual Couch, positive parenting guru Ralphie Jacobs shares five of her positive parenting tips, and I share five of mine, plus you get to hear Ralphie Jacobs sing the Jacobs family motto, that and plenty more coming up on The Virtual Couch. the virtual couch. I'm your host, Tony Overbay. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, certified mindful advocate, coach, writer, speaker, husband, father of four, ultra marathon runner, and creator of The Path Back, an online pornography recovery program that is helping people reclaim their lives from the harmful effects of pornography. If you or anyone that you know is struggling to put pornography behind you once and for all, and trust me, it can be done in a strength-based, hold the shame, become the person you always knew you could be way, 
then please head over to pathbackrecovery.com. And there you can download a short ebook that describes five common mistakes that people make when trying to get rid of pornography once and for all. Again, that is pathbackrecovery.com. And really quick on that topic, I was recently interviewed by somebody who was fully intent on trying to make me the fool who was trying to convince me that, uh, or convince me, convince our listeners that, that, that it was only the religious folk who believed that pornography was a bad thing in a marriage. And I really do. I appreciate those interviews. I've worked with over a thousand men, some women who have struggled with this issue. And believe me, a life without pornography is a life that is more present, a life more full of uh, fulfilling things, a life less consumed with the hunt, so to speak, um, less objectification. And the data backs that up like nobody's business. So uh, trust me on that one. Again, it's um, pathbackrecovery.com or actually email me at contact at tonyoverbay.com. I can point you just to a bunch of data that kind of backs that up as well. And please visit Virtual Couch on Instagram. Um, if you have not following that, I would appreciate if you just click the little follow button. And now you can find the Virtual Couch page on Facebook. That's new. Previously, I was just pointing people to Tony Overbay Licensed and Marriage Family, uh, Tony Overbay Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. But that's on there as well. So go like them both. Why not? And if you have a minute, you've, if you've enjoyed any of the Virtual Couch podcast material, please do me a favor and rate or review or subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And if you shoot me over an email about when it shows me your review, I've got uh, virtual couch um, magnets and stickers, whatever you want. You just uh, send me, point me to that review, give me your address, and I'll send that away. And um, please head over to TonyOverbay.com. Sign up there to find out more about some really exciting news. I've been alluding to this for a while, but uh, this is the first episode that I, I will kind of, I would love to just let you know that um, my book, I co-authored a book and there is a release date. It's looking like early November. And I haven't said much about this book because, um, I, I mean, I just kind of, you know, it's one of those things, don't count your chickens till they hatch. I guess that, that old saying, because while it's not quite in the same vein as a uh, Grisham or King, you know, it might not be a, a necessarily a book club read. I do feel like it is going to help a lot of people. So the book is actually called, He's a Porn Addict, Now What? An Expert and a Former Addict to Answer Your Questions. I will be playing the role of the expert and former virtual couch guest Joshua Shea is the former addict. And I have, I'll have a link to Joshua's episode in the show notes. But this is a project that I was honored to be a part of. And we answer a ton, uh, just a lot of questions that are broken down into chapters and neither of us knew what the other person was answering. And we have received so much great feedback um, from people who have already checked out the manuscript. And just, I mean, being completely transparent, I, I love when people that I follow talk about the process and I'll be so brief. I want to get to Ralphie's interview today. But I was told to plan on us submitting the manuscript and then starting to collect our rejection letters. And then we go from there, whether it is self-publishing or edit and resubmit. But I mean, I was just shocked. I was grateful. I was honored. Um, when we submit the manuscript, we receive multiple offers for the book uh, because I know that need is there. So I'll have info in the show notes more about that as well. But uh, head, to just head over to TonyOverbay.com, sign up there, and find out more about some things that are coming in the future. So that does make for a good transition, especially the co-author part and not knowing what the other person was going to say. So today my guest is the uh, just lovable, fun, always positive Ralphie Jacobs. And many of you know Ralphie as uh, Simply On Purpose on Instagram, where she has over 175,000 followers um, on her Instagram page or feed or her Instagram account. And I know why, because her messages on positive parenting are so good. And I can honestly say that I love everything that she shares, that she believes in. And while I get to do a lot with parenting and my therapy work, and I put out a few podcasts on parenting, especially the ones using the Nurtured Heart Approach, I just I, I envy what she does, is that she's causing great change, not just now, but uh, through generations to come with her messages of positive parenting. I envy the fact that she is just so focused on that message, and she's so good at spreading that message. And I know she's changed so many people. I hear about her in my practice and I did an episode with her a while back, and I'll link to that one as well. And we talk about briefly about that. The, there was a little audio glitch, a little bit of some audio issues with our episode, but in, not this one. Well, this one, a tiny bit, but the one before. And that one's really good if you just want to get to know a little bit more about Ralphie as well, because that, that, I interview her kind of about her story and what led her to the point where she is um, doing so much good work with positive parenting. But I could go on, but I really think that you're going to enjoy this episode. So Ralphie and I both came to the podcast with the goal was we had five of our favorite parenting tips. And much like what I was talking about with my book, we did not know what each other's tips were. So yeah, I guess just a little heads up. There's a, there's a little bit of a hiccup here there with the audio. It's really not bad. Uh, thank you to the internets. Um, just a little bit of glitch here and there. And I, and I actually went in and, and edited this a tiny bit last night to get rid of, you know, it's one of those things where there might just be a, a little bit of a pause before an answer. So try to get rid of some of that, but nothing too bad. 
And uh, after that, we Ralphie and I both did our five tips. Ralphie did a live video on her Instagram page, which was a lot of fun. And I include that at the end of the recording. And you'll you'll understand when, I mean, we literally say, okay, now that we're done, Ralphie's going to go live. And there's a little bit of a, man, I sounded like a grandpa. I felt like I was fumbling around, you know, what's this Instagram thing? But uh, we eventually got on the same page and we were able to talk about one of the tips that we gave on the podcast. And we probably had a little bit more to it. It was a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, there's a little bit of a, I had a challenge for a minute or two joining her on the live video, but then once I do join in, um, parenting gold, I hope. So you'll hear a slight echo when, uh, when I do join her on Instagram again, a, uh, felt like an old man moment where it hit me that I needed to turn the volume down. I think on my computer that was still doing the editing. So a slight echo for a couple minutes once we get on her live Instagram. And, I, and again, that's toward the end of the podcast where I figured out to mute the volume on, on my computer and then it, it gets a lot better from there. All right, so let's get to those parenting tips with my guest, my friend, Ralphie Jacobs. So then I already worry, what's next? What's the next new thing that then... Because I'm barely catching up to Instagram. What am I missing? I you know. Already, you already know what I'm missing or what is next? The new thing? Well, well now there's IGTV, so I have to figure that out. Okay. <laughs> so the the IGTV, okay. I have a super cool, young, hip, uh, senior in psychology intern that is that is going to take me into IGTV. Oh. Yeah, so I don't even have to learn it. Oh. Well, I, guess that's, I guess that's not the right attitude, though. I should want to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I'm there with you. I'm like, if you know how to do it, just like do it for me, please. <laughs> okay, good. That is exactly where I'm at. I am. That's where I am. All right. Well, hey, yeah. I, thank you. Thank you for making a return appearance on the virtual couch. I'm really excited about this. Oh God, no, it's it's super fun. I I love being interviewed by you. Do you remember um, the thing that was so hard is that last one? I was so excited about it, and I felt like we had really good content, but there was. Uh, there was a little bit of audio stuff going on. And then also, I think it was the next day was the ginormous social media fast. And uh, I went ahead and put the episode out anyway. And so, uh, you know that? So the timing was just kind of interesting. We'll just call it that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. So- <laughs> so do you have your, do you have your, uh, do you have your um, five parenting tips, Ralphie? I have them ready. Okay. How do we do this? Do you want to go one after the other? Um, are you drawing them out of a hat or do you have them in any particular order? Uh, oh, draw them out of a hat. That would have been <laughs> I know, right? No, I, I just have them on my computer. I can like close my eyes and point. You want me to do that? <laughs> or I was thinking about this. I numbered, I numbered mine and I was thinking if you just say a number, then I have to start with that number and I can do the same. Oh. Yeah, right. So if you want to number yours, I, I can pick a number. I like it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I like it. Do I like have, it. Let's do that. Do you have yours numbered? Do you tell me when you're ready? Yeah, they are. They're, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Ralphie Jacobs. I'm so ready. What is your yes. number four parenting tip? Okay. Number four parenting secret is um, <laughs> to, <laughs> you're so excited. I am. Is to talk less and live. Yeah. Are you, are you ready, Tony? I'm so ready. Okay. So talk less and listen more. That's number four. Okay. Tell me. Uh, more. I, love I, it. Tell me I, more. I, yeah. All right. So it just, like, it just means to be curious longer, like stay curious longer before you make a judgment call or you decide to monologue or sermonize or whatever. Do you just are willing to listen and to learn from your child before you want them to learn from you? Um, that also means like using cues, using little things, uh, less words to be able to get a child to do something like, um, giving a cue. It's like just a really simple directive. What's a, What's a good example of a cue? Of saying, like Why are you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So an example of a cue, one thing that I use a lot with um, my little one, she's five is that she'll, um, you know, say something whiny or she'll say something that's impolite and I'll just say, try again. And that's cool. just a cue to get her to just uh, rethink yeah. and reboot and try it again. So she'll, she'll say, give me a drink of water. Mm. I'll say, try again. And she'll say, can I have a drink of water, please? So that's a, that's a really e- easy cue. Um, another one is like cle- yeah, shoes. You can just say something that you see like, oh, wet towel on the floor <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Yeah. So it's this quick cue. Oh, oops, that's, that's my bad. 
I need okay. to, I need to pick that up. And that one's that minus the, the minus the shame. Yeah. I mean, that one takes away that as parent, the parents that feel like they have to really that they have to really understand, you know, what they've done wrong. And instead it's, no, they can figure it out. Um, then it's uh, with a little bit of gentle yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. Talk less, listen more, my friends. That's okay. my number. That's my number four. Okay. And right. I should okay, tell I'm people before, yeah, before you pick one, I should tell, yeah. I didn't even think about this, but, uh, so Ralphie and I have no idea what the other person chose. Yeah. And so, and, and I'm not no even going to jump in and say, um, oh, I have that one too. So we're just going at this. We'll, we will, we have no idea. That's why I'm so excited. <laughs> so I was, oh, okay. That's why I was okay. getting, you told me that. All right. I'm ready. Oh, okay. I'm going to, all right. I'm going to lock lip then when you say yours. Okay. Number two. I hope I remember which numbers I pick. I'm going to write Oh, I didn't even think about that. Two. That's a good point. Um, and you, I don't want you to lock your lips. I don't want you to talk too, but I, so I, I, but what's funny is I literally, <laughs> this is one of those, the, the universe is aligned and all that. I, I was going to jokingly say, after you said yours, I was going to say, Ralphie, ask me number two. So, and you literally asked me number two. So this is really, going, yeah, this is going really well. You'll see because my, <laughs> my number two is the seek first to understand before being understood. So, oh, so, excellent. <laughs> right. So the, the, I know it's a Covey principle, but I use it in couples counseling. I especially use it with parenting and because I, I agree it's that, uh, and I, I tell a quick, uh, my quick example of this is I had a daughter who came to me in eighth grade and said she wanted to start gymnastics. And I, my immediate man brain wanted to say, no, you're, you're supposed to already be, you know, proficient by, by the age of five, if you're going to go anywhere in gymnastics, I've seen the Olympics. I know how that works. And, and I wanted to say, you know, and it's expensive and, and there's things that you probably haven't, you know, you, you, I don't want you to start it and not finish it. And those things were going through my brain, but then I was, I just said, Hey, tell me more. What kind of, what led up to that? And I got to hear this whole train of thought that she had about, feeling like she missed out and that she always had wanted to do gymnastics, but she never felt she could. And, and she had been doing a little bit of tumbling with a friend who was involved in gymnastics and she'd been going to some open gym. And she just really felt like if she didn't try it, that, that she would regret that. And she really didn't want regret. So after I heard that, how could I do the, you know, how could I then say, well, I don't think you should. So I love that she, you know, I, I saw it first understand. And then that one has a I always like to joke about the stories that then, you know, and then the person went on to be a millionaire and, the, and a, you know, and a world leader. But um, so my daughter ends up doing gymnastics and then she gets to high school and then she's never done cheerleading or anything. And there's this, this sport called stunt, which is, it's a combination of cheerleading and gymnastics. And then she makes the stunt team and becomes one of the main people on the stunt team. And they literally won the California state title last year. So had I been this, awesome. you know, right. If I had just said to her, um, I don't think that's a good idea, Sid. I, I, I don't think it's a good, you know, I don't think you should do it without hearing her. Then, uh, then she would, wouldn't have kind of gone on to do this, these things that she's done. I'm not saying that it's my, I can claim all the credit, but if I wouldn't have listened to her, that definitely would have. Yeah. I love that. That's so, so good. Yeah. My, my husband tells me that all the time. You're one of those kind of people, Ralphie. And I'm, <laughs> and I know he's just, he's just praising me so that I rise to the occasion. <laughs> but yes, no seek place. to understand, not to be understood. Yeah. Okay. Or, okay. Are you ready for your next one? <clears throat> yes. Okay. I'm ready. Uh, so I already did four, right? So let's go. Uh, number, I feel like I'm doing this guessing game where I want to know what you think I'm going to guess. And then I'm going to guess the other yeah, thing. I, I'm, I'm, uh, number five, I'm sending Ralph. you vibes. Number five. <clears throat> number five. Oh my goodness. This is a good one. Okay. So number five is just this concept of being willing to adapt all, all the time. Oh, always like, be willing to change. Yeah. And to tweak your, your family and your systems. I think that there's this misconception that families just are that they, that I, and I, I feel like um, media puts it out there. You know, they just are, you just like live day in and day out. And you just kind of uh, you just live your life without having any work put into it. It's so yeah. very misleading. Um, we, we work for anything in our life that we're proud of. We work in our jobs. We work hard at our jobs. We work at our hobbies and our passions, things that we're interested in. Why not our families not be, willing to work hard in our families um, and families require just as much work as anything else, if not more. So being committed to continually work at your family and with your family and on your family and create a framework, but also within that framework to be flexible. Um, mm. Because as we all know, as soon as we figure something out, 
we have to change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think that, yeah, it's like, um, a, you know, we'll talk about, oh, this, this idea, I had this idea and it's worked great for my family. So it'll, it might work great for three months or four months or five months. And then you have to tweak it. You've got to change it because your child's growing oh, and yeah. um, developing new ideas and new skills. So just being willing to adapt and to learn all the time. Um, I, that, I, I love that because I do feel like people get stuck in that, uh, um, if they are, if they change, then that means that they are doing something wrong or they're not staying committed or they can't hold on to any, you know, any boundary or, and I, and I feel like what you're saying is, is exactly the opposite of being more flow. You can be able to flow. I thought of, uh, well, coining the term, maybe we can coin the term, the neuroplasticity of the family. Cause we always want to talk about the neuroplasticity yes. of the brain, right? And, uh, so I, I like that. Yeah. The family. The family is malleable, adaptable. Um, I really like that one a lot. I do. Oh, yeah. I, I love that too. Oh, I love the plasticity of a family. That's awesome. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick your number four. Oh, okay. I was, uh, I was pointing at one. I mean, I'm still very excited that you picked four, but I was uh, trying to channel the, the <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually that was my knee jerk it was one one was my knee jerk but i overthought it ah no i was never gonna, overthink i was i was all right three. okay so number four number four is uh for me it's that your goal is to build and i love this concept it's called inner wealth so your goal is to build inner wealth and that's really a part of the the parenting style that i love is this one called the nurtured heart approach um i've done a lot of different podcasts on it um, it's kind of similar to love and logic. I'm sure some of your your people will will know that or or nurtured heart or you know one of these kind of frameworks. But in this one, it has these three stands. And uh, the first one is that I refuse to energize negative behavior. And I know that can be easier said than done. And I know that's a process. Talk about you know needing the neuroplasticity. Um, but where we it's the concept where our kids know how to push our buttons, and our goal is to try to learn how to hide our buttons and that kind of not energizing the negative behavior, not as reactive. And then they, uh, the second stand in the nurtured heart approach is they call it absolutely yes. So that's saying that I will relentlessly energize the positive. And I feel like with parents, a lot of times this, they, they've got a lot of really cool um, camera analogies with this one of talking about these Kodak moments or and where we will see our kids doing something good, but we don't want to interrupt them because we're afraid that if we interrupt them to tell them that we really appreciate the way they're playing with their brother, because that shows me that you know, they're, they're being a, uh, a really good example, then they're going to all of a sudden, you know, start fighting or they're going to want, they're going to want a snack or they're going to, you know, so we, we tiptoe around the good behavior at times. And, and so this second stand is just absolutely inter, you know, energizing the positive. And then the third one, which I love is it's just that stand three is absolutely clear. So it's this concept of maintaining clarity around the rules, um, that are consistent. And so, uh, because I feel like that is the one where, you know, it's easy to, uh, I think the easiest concept there is as you're yelling at your kid, telling them don't yell at people, you know, so kind of trying to maintain those boundaries with clarity. So that one's my building inner wealth. It, 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 you know, when you're interacting with your kids, are you building inner wealth or are you, are you breaking them down? Because I, I just, I have a hard time with any of the concepts of breaking one down. You know, it's not the military, so we're not trying to break them down to ground zero um, and, and create this you know, robot, we're trying to nurture, or build this inner wealth. So uh, there's my number four. Oh, those are so good. You're so good. That's a drink of my Kool-Aid. I love, <laughs> I love it so much. Uh -huh. I do. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so all right, I love uh, it. Um, tiny, uh, tiny, quick, um, quick ADD moment. What's your favorite Kool-Aid flavor? <laughs> I, I, I actually, I haven't had Kool-Aid in forever, oh. but, um, yeah, but I do like this little, um, what are they called? True lemons that you can put oh, in yeah. water. It's like a drink in hand. I, it's like, ah, I don't know. I, okay. I, wild berry is my favorite there. So if you want to like give that a try, it's, it's so <laughs> good will. and it helps you drink water. So. Exactly. Stay hydrated people. <laughs> there you go. There's our, that's our bottom line. Oh, I love black cherry Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same so I, feel, I feel honored oh, I to drinking your Kool-Aid. Okay, so now, oh yeah, are you ready? So now, I think yeah, now I do already feel like I forgot the ones I know. I uh, did. I, did I ask you? I really can't believe I did. Okay, how about your number? I don't know why I'm staying away from number one. I mean, because I don't necessarily know that I made my number one my number one. But let's hear your number one. 
Okay. So this is perfect. Segue into what you just said. My number one is being happy works better. Oh, good. I, I just, I, I love it. I totally believe it 100%. I love your absolutely yes. And to refuse to energize the, no, the, the negative. I love that because that's just completely what I teach all the time is that being happy, being positive works better. It works better long-term because we're teaching our children to love to behave well Mm. and that they make these um, positive um, neurons fire and wire together. So, so they're making associative feelings about behavior. And so it just works so much better long-term. It's a happier way to parent. It's more joyful way to parent and children who feel good about themselves and inside and out are children who behave better, who behave um, a- according to what their parents um, want to create in their home. And, and so positivity, it just, it just moves forward so much better. And, and it might work, look like work in the beginning, yeah. but after a while, become second nature to you because it is, it just feels like a breath of fresh air. It's a wonderful way to live. It's a wonderful way to parent. It is. I love that you're, you acknowledge too, that it can feel like work because I do feel like when people are shifting their parenting style, it does feel a little bit clunky or awkward, or if they try to act positive and then it, and then they immediately get angry because they don't get the response they want. I run into the, the parents often that say, well, that didn't work, you know, and it's, well, it's going to probably take more than one or yeah. two. Yeah. 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 And that's, yeah, that's something I say too, is that not all positive change feels positive right away. I like that. Sometimes it does not feel positive. Sometimes, sometimes they fight harder. Sometimes they're more whiny and it's just because we've, you know, conditioned that behavior. And so it, it takes some time for things to feel a little, to feel better. Um, but it does like in the end, it's just, uh, you don't have to be in all their muck. You don't have to be in all their junk and you're yeah. we, we shouldn't. And, um, it's just a better, it's a better way and more joyful way to parent. Okay. I like that too. So I know in my paperwork as a therapist, you do have stuff in there that says, Hey, guess what? It might get a little bit hard before it gets better. And that's normal. So kind of the same thing with the parenting. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's good. I'm glad you point that out. Okay. Um, let me think. Did I, no, I did. All right. I am going to ask you what your number one, I'm going to ask you what your number one is. Tony, what is it? Okay. I'm excited about this one because this is one that I, you know, I admittedly came to, I feel like somewhat organically as a parent. So I I have, what I, my kids are 21, 19, 17 and 15. And I feel like, uh, I wish I would have figured this one out a little earlier, but if you're going to say yes, then mean it and own it and don't pull the martyr card. And I feel like often oh. if we're going to, and I, and I just wrote some examples of if it's, you know, their, your teenager says, Hey, can I stay out another hour? You know, the, I feel like what a lot of times parents want to do is they want to make sure that the, the kid knows that I'm not very happy about it, but I'm saying yes. And I just feel, you know, what a, what a mixed message. Mm. this is. So, you know, if it's, I feel like often we'll say things like, Oh, geez. I mean, I guess so. I'd rather you not, but I guess that's fine. And I feel like man, with the teenage brain and all the things that they have going on anyway, and here they reach out to you and, and then they kind of walk away from that saying, I, okay, I, I mean, thanks, but I kind of feel crummy now. So now I think I'm going to spend the next hour that yeah. I just asked for feeling crummy and not, you know, and now I'm the person who's saying to their friend, ah, I don't know, I don't know what's up with my dad. He seemed kind of weird. And then instead of embracing that hour and, and you know, we're taking away their opportunity to be present. So I just feel like if, if you're going to say yes, then say, yeah, sure. Thanks for asking. I'll see you in an hour. Instead of the, you know, pulling that, uh, I want them to know that I'm not happy about this because what's, what's the goal there? I, I just, that, I struggle with that one. Oh, so good. So good. I, um, <clears throat> I say, I talk about that too, how like if your child asks you, Hey mommy, can I have a drink of water? Uh-huh. And you grumble and you moan. You're like, oh, you're always asking for water. Why are you always asking for this? This is so frustrating. Why don't you just go to bed? But then you end up giving them the glass of yeah. water anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well just say, sure. Yeah, I'll give you a glass of water. And you walk away feeling so much better and the child does too. So I, I love that you, um, you simplified it perfectly. No, but that's good too. Cause, cause when you put it that way, I feel like, uh, that, you know, I hear teenagers often and couples and individuals. And I mean, I've already done two sessions today and the theme of one of them was someone feeling like they are, have to walk on eggshells around, whether it's their partner or their parent or, and that's not a good way to live, to kind of wonder if, okay, I'm going to ask this thing. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what I'm going to get back. Is it going to be the, the happy dad or the sad dad or the angry dad or, you know, yeah. and okay, I really have forgot. Okay. So we did yours. We did one, we did two and we did four. You didn't, no. you didn't do two yet. Okay. 
You didn't do two yet. <laughs> which, which other one? Which other one didn't I do? I feel like you want me to do two. I feel like you want me to ask two. Uh, let's see, two, two and three, two and three. Two and three are left. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. surprise, I'm gonna surprise you then and say, Ralphie, give me your number two. See what I did there? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Here's my number two. <laughs> Here's my number two. Uh, my number two is to assemble your team, to realize that your family is your team, that you're not like, you know, in this cruel twist of fate of parenting, <laughs> that they really are your buddies, your pals, they're people that you're supposed to walk through this life with together. So assemble them together. And one great way to do that is to have a regular family meeting. This is something that's just overlooked so much, especially with our society now with the go and faster, you know, smarter type of it. No, but like slow down and be more of a, a slower, closer kind of a family. So have that family meeting, keep them short, keep them age appropriate, but keep them consistent. And you, within that family meeting, you'll teach them like, how to be solution thinkers, how to, how, to, how to be presented with a problem, but find a solution. You can do that through role-playing. Um, you can do that through um, talking things through with your children. It just is really empowering to your whole family. And I also suggest like having a family motto or a manifesto or a song that just describe your family. So you can say, what words describe our family or what makes our family special? And then you just come up with some little chant or a cheer or something that you do beforehand. It just basically, it's kind of like branding your family. Yeah. At, you know, in, in a business term, they, they, it is a organization. Uh-huh. Like all the best organizations in the world have regular meetings. So, um, you know, what's um, funny. It's, uh, it's I, creating the, the matter. I want to hear what, do you have a family song? I want to hear this now, Ralphie. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Yes, <laughs> we do have a family song. Okay, are you are you ready? I'm ready. <clears throat> I feel like okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, I'm I'm more nervous now. All right, here we go. All right, the Jacobs are a family that sees the sunny side. We have a certain unity that cannot be denied. We love the Lord. We love to serve and feel so truly blessed. We love to learn and work so hard to do our very best. J A J A C J A C O B S Jacobs Jacobs we love each other best. Woo! Okay, <laughs> I, that that was amazing. I mean, I am. Oh wait, hang on. I'm literally gonna stand. I am standing. I am standing. <laughs> That was oh. okay. Yeah, you okay, oh. Ralphie, Ralphie Jacobs delivers. I, I, I mean, when you said that, of course, I had to ask, <laughs> but I did not know that we would get that. And, and I hope you know that I that will be isolated as some sort of clip, sound clip, that sort of thing, and shared. I mean, that was that was wonderful. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> that really was good. Um, Yay, okay, thank you for sharing that. I mean, I, I and now I'm doing that thing, the shame based parent, where I'm going, oh man, we don't have a song, I'm a crummy dad. You know, but I, I'm, oh, going, heavens, I, I know I, 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 I need to get a song. I, I knew that was really nice though. That was, do you guys start every meeting with that? Or <laughs> how often do you guys sing that? Yes. Well, yeah, probably like weekly, much to the chagrin of our kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sometimes it's just Brian and I just singing it. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just doing a solo, but <laughs> it's still being done. <laughs> no, that was really nice. That was, I have to tell you a quick funny thing too, that I think, uh, I will, I can't wait to see how this sounds on the podcast, but whatever you said something that keyed, um, Siri. So I'm, I'm sitting here recording and my phone came up and said, here's what I've come up with. And, and I didn't even know that, uh, we, we <laughs> referred to Siri, but, uh, she was there. I must, right. I must have said, Hey Siri. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right. Very nice. Okay. I, I, I love that. I appreciate that song. And I have to tell you before we get to my, if I scroll down one more, I have a number six and, uh, and this one is, oh. well, but, but I mean, I wasn't going to pull that. I wasn't trying to one up, I promise literally. But my, my next one was when my wife and I were going over these last night and she was super excited that you were coming on, which I really appreciate that. But she was saying, have this meeting, come to, you know, come together at the end of the nights or, or with mealtimes or be very purposeful in meetings and how it's grounding. And, and, and I just love the fact, and I, and now I feel yeah. bad because I was like, oh yeah, that's a good one, but it didn't make my top five. So I'm so glad that you said that. So, you know, <laughs> well, it was meant, it was meant to be, it was meant to be. I just find that when I'm teaching my workshops and I, and they're like, okay, but where, like, what do we teach? When do we teach that? Cause I talk about how important it is to remember to be your child's teacher and you're uh-huh. supposed to your responsibilities to teach them how to behave. 
And so they're like, hey, but when do we do that? And I'm like, do have a family meeting. They're the best. They're awesome. It's a great um, non-invasive place to teach your family and to become a stronger family unit. It's perfect. So that is. I talk about them a lot. Okay. So do I have two? All left? right. You, okay. Um, I'm going to pick, yeah, I'm going to pick three. Three. All right. You, you're right. I have three and five left. Three. Um, I, I call it the, uh, the kid by kid rule instead of always having a family rule. And, and I think that this will make sense as I, as I kind of play it out. And this is because all the kids are so different. And, and so I see, and sometimes that, you know, I, sometimes I do feel whether it's from counseling with teenagers or working with my own, just, and, and here's an example I wrote down. So if your kid is dating and pushing the envelope the day after they turn 16 or even before, then that's, you know, they may, that might warrant an earlier curfew. And if your kid is the head of the, you know, the head dungeon master of the D and D guild who over communicates and rarely goes out of the house, then, you know, um, there, that might be, if they want to stay a little later somewhere, then that you might be more willing to, uh, be lenient with their curfew. And, and I know that can sound like it's going against, you know, our curfew is, and, and that might not be the best example, but I do feel like, um, sometimes when I'm working with teenagers, though, they feel like they're just put in this box and that they're never heard. And so I think it kind of goes back to some of the things that you and I talked about earlier, uh, where maybe it is what is difficult about that for someone's curfew or just, but kind of hearing them out as an individual. So, you know, finding ways that you can, if there is, if it is possible, having more of a, a, a kid by kid rule when, when you can, I know there has to be structure and family rules, but, uh, but if you can, those kid to kid rules work well too. I don't know. I'm curious on your thoughts on that one, Ralphie. Oh, I, yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I say like always like balance justice with mercy. Okay. I like that. You, yeah. Yeah. If you know a child really well and you know that you have this trust that you've built with them, then absolutely. It's so difficult to parent children the same because they're so different. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so, okay. Yeah. Like having that framework there, but yeah, it's okay to parent them differently and to, you know, interact with them differently and even love them differently because they all have different love languages anyway. Yes. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Well, all right. Which number do you have left? Oh, I have, have three left. Three. You have three. Number okay. three. Are you ready? Yeah. So number three for me is to create a system. I, um, I grew up in a really big family. My husband grew up in a really big family and systems are this wonderful thing that kind of hums in the background mm. so that you don't have to be in all the details all the time you can just um, have more fun and live your, live your life more joyfully and have more fun with your children. And they just kind of um, put things, like create boundaries for the things that look like work, the things that um, need and must be done so that you can have fun and be spontaneous and enjoy your life with your family. Um, oh. So I, I just, uh, yeah, like a, uh, any kind of a system. If it, uh, so for example, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about a system coming when the children come home from school, when they're little Mm -hmm. and they're learning about the tasks that they need to do to transition from school to home. Um, you can come up with like a little card system that says, okay, when they're in this little envelope, those are things that need to be done. And then you transfer them to the done envelope. So it's like a visual thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, put your backpack away, put your, you know, wash your hands, um, put your lunch, a uh, dirty lunchbox in the sink or whatever so that they can see. And that's just a system that once they've been trained, they, it can run in the background. So you don't have to be the warden. You yes. don't have to nag. It's, it's just a better way uh, to parent. And like uh, another system could be like a work for pay system or a family economy mm-hmm. or whatever you'd like to call it so that they can, they can self-motivate. They work, they build a work ethic, they build resiliency and they become a self-driven child because they're learning how to be internally motivated through the, through a system like that. So you just kind of kick starts a behavior. So what I, what I love too is, so if I, the one, um, the one that I talked about with the nurtured heart approach, those, uh, that building inner wealth, that is that, that works so perfectly to be able to build that inner wealth. Because I like what you said there of not being the warden. Cause in that nurtured heart approach, yeah, we, we don't want to be the punisher. We want to be the one that they, yeah, they know the systems, they know the rules. Cause then you can praise them when they do well. That's that energizing that, uh, yeah. Here. And then, and then you're, so you're not the, uh, I, yeah, I'm not now doling out the punishment. They already kind of know what happens if they don't uh, work within the system. I really like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and it's kind of like, you know, the things that haven't been done just haven't been done and it, and it's not anything that's 
it's your responsibility as a parent. It's still their responsibility. It's still part of their life and their ownership for their life. So I'm really a fan and um, advocate for helping a child to learn like that their life is their life and that, um, that you are a guide and not yeah. necessarily a dictator that you are helping guide them through their life in a loving way, but they're still learning from their choices and their decisions. Um, I, I'm, I love the brain research, what talks about the only way for um, a brain to develop and to grow is through choices. And so mm. allowing them as many choices as possible to get, to get better at making choices, basically. Yeah. yeah. So they don't get uh, to be the, uh, the people I see older later in life that really do, they get frozen with a choice and then, and then, then end up not having a, a choice to make a certain choice. Those choices get, kind of taken away from them. So that's, uh, that's perfect. Absolutely. Or they like, sh- yeah. They, or they shirk responsibility from a choice yeah. too, right? Yeah. Or they're yeah. like, I don't want to be responsible for that choice. Or I did make the choice, but I'm not going to take responsibility. For yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, 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 it's teaching them to take responsibility for their choices and to own, have ownership of those choices. Too. Yeah. So I, I like it. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I only have one left. It's, it's number five. Okay, so this is uh, this one is um, and uh, boy, when my kids were little and they would watch the Disney movies, there's one of them. I want to say it was uh, was a Cinderella, and they had this like uh, really sweet song. So this is love. I will not sing that one, um, but my daughter's yeah. just a nice job. Oh please, come no. on! <laughs> oh no, oh no. Um, but so kind of, and I think of that whenever I say this next one. But I just, I just like this concept of does that feel like love? And and I kind of go into this. Uh, do we sometimes? worry or really energize the wrong things and so do we get angry with them about things like their math you know or so it's important to be able to help them and 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 help them learn their math or you know things like that but if it's coming from a hey you know you you didn't do well on that you really need to do better you know or i can't believe that you um didn't study or you've told me it's just all of those kind of guilt or shame-based parenting model but the anti-positive parenting parenting model and i just sometimes in, as a therapist, you'll sit in a room and you'll hear those kind of exchanges. And I just, I just stop sometimes and say, Hey, what's your goal? You know, what's the intent? Because if the intent is to make the person feel bad, if you really feel like that's what is going to motivate them to change behavior, you know, number one, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of point to, you know, 15 years into doing therapy, I haven't seen that work really well. Or if it works, it, it works out of a um, fear of obligation, but it's not a true motivator to change. And so if, if it doesn't feel like, love, if it doesn't feel like, you, you know, there is, uh, I guess it goes back to that building inner wealth. Um, then I just feel like, okay, there's, there's gotta be a different way to do that. And I feel like that's when we get angry or, or those sort of things we recognize sometimes, okay, this, this is a little bit out of control. It doesn't feel like the, the goal here is love or the goal is the relationship. Um, can I read a quote real quick? I'll try to make this one fast. So, yes. Um, so I love this, uh, Sue Johnson. She's the, the, a psychologist who developed the emotionally focused therapy EFT model that I just absolutely love and parent are in uh, couples therapy. And she has a book called love sense. And it's kind of the science behind this emotionally focused couples therapy. And I just love it. She says on a societal level, the most obvious implication of the new science of bonding is that we must educate for connection. So basically saying that we don't educate enough about how important a connection is So she says the most organic way to do this is to support couples in their efforts to create loving bonds and be responsive parents. She said we should acknowledge, uh, and she says as uh, Franz DeWall notes, that there is no escaping the reality that we are dependent on others, and it's a given. And if dependency and vulnerability is recognized and handled well in loving relationships, then it is the source of the best human qualities, such as empathy, kindness, and cooperation. And here's the big part of this quote. She says, we need to educate for qualities such as empathy, which is at least as relevant to health as happiness, citizenship, and arithmetic. But do we know how to teach those qualities? So that's where I go back to, I feel like we teach things like math or citizenship or or health, but, but really empathy and kindness and connection are the things that when we don't have those, that's when we feel like the what's wrong with me stories, or we have those attachment issues, or, you know, it does kind of cause the anxiety or the stress. So I just, I feel like we need to do a little better job of teaching those qualities like empathy and kindness and and those sort of things. There we go. That's like I was on a soapbox. I'll get off my soapbox, Ralphie. I love, no, I I can get up there with you if there's enough room. (laughs) I love that. I love it so much. I, um, it is so important for children to learn that skill. Like, uh, anytime I talk about, you know, let's be like, 
be positive with your children. Look for what's good. They'll, they'll, I'll get comments that come back and say, well, that's not real life. Right. Like, right. Life is not looking for what's good all the time. Right. I know you've heard that before oh, too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But, but home is, home is not this, supposed to be the same. Yeah. It's founded upon like unconditional love. It's supposed yes. to be different. Yes. And um, the only way for a child to learn to look for what is right in a situation rather what's wrong is through the parent's model. Absolutely. What a skill, what an awesome skill for a child to learn is to find the positive in situations and to be a solution thinker rather than, you know, the problem finder. And I, I, I love that idea of the every, every relationship or every conversation that you have with someone, it's either seeking power or it's seeking connection. Yes. And with our children, we should be seeking connection rather than having a power struggle or, um, you know, being autocratic. It's, it's more important to connect because if you can connect first, they're just so much more likely to cooperate and to listen to you. And yeah. every parent that does this really well are parents that are the most influential with their children. Really. I mean, they just influence them for good in such Absolutely. a beautiful way. I love to watch meek and mild and kind, empathetic parents and how they parent and, and, and how they're shaping their children's character. It's just beautiful. So yeah, you just, uh, I, I, like that. I totally agree with that. In the word modeling, I, mean, I really do feel like that's it, it modeling. You can model empathy. I, I have people often ask me, how do I teach my kids empathy? Or they, they, they may be frustrated that they feel like their kid has no empathy. And and I like to kind of normalize first, you know, uh, a, a kid's job is to kind of, they, they typically move from self-centered as a, as a kid to self-confident. And, uh, and I feel like a big part of that is, is modeling those behaviors or modeling that empathy. And, and uh, so that's when I have a parent say, what's the, how can I get my child to be empathetic? It's well, kind of model empathy then. That's probably a pretty good idea, a place to start. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's give it a try. That you're like, they are a reflection. They're a very strong reflection of you. I mean, not 100% because they come with their own brains and yes. own struggles and weaknesses, but they really do pick up on the flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they taste very much the same. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. it's very hey, do, do, we, do we cover all five? Do we do that? We did. I mean, I think we did. We did it. We did it. So, no, there thanks, you go, Ralphie. parents. Hey, there. Uh, 10 tips. Yeah. yeah 10 the tips. secrets are out. So, Hey, do I will stay on, I will continue to record if you want to do, uh, if you want to go live on Instagram now, and then I'll kind of just include that on the podcast. It'd be kind of fun too. Cause maybe we'll cover some things. Oh, okay. I like it. Okay. I will so then tell me what I'm doing. I'm, I'm logging, I, I'm logging to Instagram. Okay. Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> like, here's the part where yes. I'm, the, I'm the grandpa. Is, is that on the phone, Ralphie? Or uh, where, where do I find this? <laughs> yeah, that thing you have in your pocket. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I'm going to do it live here. Okay. All right. Okay, you were yeah, nervous. Just a second, and then here's, on, here's I'll go get, live. Okay, here's where I get nervous. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm going to go live. And then you just ask for a request to okay. join. Oh, there hey, you go. guys. Can you see me? Oh, yeah. wow. This is fun. I've got a fun filter. <laughs> Do no, you really? Don't want that. There okay. we go. Yeah. All right. So you just hop on okay. with me and then we'll talk. All right. But I'm going to say hi to my people. Okay. Mine Hello, Simplies. How are you? All right. I see like the, um, wait a minute. Is that you? Yeah. Or is that I'm somebody here. else? Oh, that's not me. You are there? No, that's not that's me. That's not you. No. Okay, here we go. Uh, so I got, all right, here we go. Send a request. Here we go. So that is super funny. <laughs> that was okay. somebody else. Oh, there you are. Oh, my word. I just had like somebody else right. join. <laughs> now you, now, that's me right there. Okay, now. Yeah, there I am. Okay, all right. There I am. Okay. Connect to the funny, to the friend who I just let join. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, there. okay, there's Tony. There Help we go. Me. Okay. Okay, I'm going to bring you the earbud. Okay, perfect. So I can hear you now. All right. All right, All right Tony. Are you ready that, that was, to give a, give a secret? That was so fun, though. We just covered, we gave 10 parenting secrets is what we just did. And they were, they, and they didn't even, they, none of them were really the same, were they? No, I mean, they supported each other. Absolutely. But it, they weren't exactly the same, which I love. I love that, um, you know, two people that talk and teach parenting can have such similar views. Yeah. All right. So in this, uh, the podcast is going to go up tomorrow. I can't wait to, for this one. 
Yeah. Okay. You go first. So just, uh, just close your eyes and point at one. So this is one oh. of five secrets that Tony has. And oh, hey, Tony, tell them what you do. Yeah. Um, tell, I, tell them what you do. So I'm a, I'm a licensed mar- I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And, uh, and I have a podcast called The Virtual Couch that I, uh, Ralphie was on long ago. And the funny quick story to that was that the, Ralphie was on. There was a little bit of uh, audio challenges, but not, not anything bad. We got the, audio, or the episode out. But then the, literally the next day, there was this uh, encouragement of a, of a worldwide media fast for a long period of time. So I felt like our episode never quite got its due because you gave parenting tips and you talked about your own story on that episode. And I was really grateful for it. So, but uh, marriage and family Aww. therapist. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he's so fun. He's super fun to, um, to be on a podcast with. Okay. So Tony, pick, pick one of your okay. five. Here All right. We go. So, uh, I am going to pick, um, Oh, you taught me to close my eyes. Okay, I'm closing my eyes and I'm pointing right no here. Cheating. Okay. Um, all right. Here it is. This was the one that was my number one. It's not my number one as in five, four, three, two, one. It was my number to number one. And it is if you're going to say yes to your child, then mean it, own it, and don't pull the martyr card. And so what I mean by that is this is that concept where if we're going to, if if our kid says, Hey dad, can I stay out another hour? Uh, if I can extend my curfew, that Tell them if you mean yes, then say, yeah, you bet. And I'll see you in an hour. I hope you have a fun time. Because I feel like oftentimes as parents, we feel like we want to let them know. We want to kind of hem and haw and say, oh, man, you know, I don't really want you to, but I guess. And so what you do is then you, you know, you, you send your child off for that extra hour, completely confused, unable to be present in the moment. Now they're, they're trying to figure out what's up with my dad? You know, is, is there something going on there that I do something wrong? Or so I just feel like, you know, oftentimes I say that as parents, we say, we like to say, we tell our kids, you can come and talk to us about anything. And then as soon as they come and tell us that they wrecked the car, they got a bad grade, then we freak out. And so then they, they aren't feeling like they can be very open. And I feel like this is just one of those examples along the way where if we're saying, hey, you can come tell me anything. If you feel like you want to extend your curfew and you have a good reason, then come tell me. But really what we're saying is, but I still might throw some shame at you. Um, so just be prepared. So, you know, I just feel like... Uh, if we're going to say yes, you know, say yes. And I think on the podcast, you had a good example with giving your kids water with this one. A lot of hydration talk in the episode today, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It must be hot, hot Texas. Sorry. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, though, I, I gave the example of if you, if, if you are going to say yes, then don't do it angrily. Yeah. Um, if your child says, hey, mom, I need a drink of water, then say, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll give you a drink of water because you're going to give them a drink of water either way. You're not going to like let them go to bed and they're super right. thirsty. So instead, so instead of saying, oh, you're always, at, you're always delaying. You're always coming up with excuses. Why don't you just stay in your bed? I mean, why didn't you get a drink of water before? Yeah. And blah, 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 blah. just say, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll give you a drink of water. And then you give them a drink of water. You end the night, give them a kiss. And it's just such more, a more positive experience. Yeah, because no parent after that... that no parent after that goes back and is like, yeah, I, I made them feel crummy. You know, I mean, that's just, I feel like that's more at the end of that. You go, Good job. Exactly. what was my Good point? Job. What do you win a, a not as positive relationship with your, your child? So that is not our goal. Our goal is a very good relationship with our child. Okay, Ralphie, I'm very excited for, uh, which number are you going with? It looks like you're grabbing something. Right. It looks like you're grabbing okay, something. So I think that was like something, grabbing something stinky out of something there. Yeah. <laughs> It's like slimy assholes. <laughs> um, I picked, I picked assemble your team. Okay. That was my number two is to okay. assemble your team. So, I mean, I'm an Avengers fan. My followers know this. I love Loki kind of weird, but I really do like him. I love, he's my favorite character. Anyway, assemble your team means to the, re, re, realize that your family is your team. They're your teammates and that you just don't, um, have to walk through life grudgingly that you had, you had to form this family and now it's the pits. It's the worst thing ever. And this is a terrible twist of fate. It's more like they're my teammates. We're going to work together. We're actually going to bring each other happiness and joy, and we're going to learn from each other. So a great way to assemble a team and to remember that you are a family unit is to have a family meeting and have regular family meetings where you uh, teach a new skill, you calendar so you know how to support each other in your week. And then you also have like a, a song or a motto or a, or a chant or a cheer 
or something that helps your family be more defined. I talked about this, like it's kind of branding your family. Yeah. It's saying, why does this family matter? Why is this family special? Why are we unique? You talk, you can talk about the plans that you have for the future. You can talk about your um, traditions that you have. It just creates and assembles a team. And, and I love that. It just, it, it, it's like weaving fabric together. So it can't, be okay. So I have a, I have a one thing to hook people for tomorrow. So when you said the family song, if anybody listens to the podcast tomorrow, Ralphie literally sang her, the Jacob's family song. And it was, it, it, I gave her a standing ovation, literally gave her a standing ovation. It was <laughs> that was very nice. So that is, that is a, enough oh. to listen tomorrow period. And then can I ask you then uh, as an Avengers fan, is it kind of just a, is it a layup to kind of say which Avengers character do I look like? Or do I resemble? Is that one too easy? Hmm. Am I okay? Wait. Well, I I don't want to say the wrong one though. I don't well, want to offend. Know. I don't know. So. I, I thought there was like a bald guy that was really smart or something like that. Isn't there's that? Am I missing the? Is that? Is that that's an X Men right? Oh, that's what I meant. Is that an X Men? I knew that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> You're right. What is his name? I don't even remember his name. Maybe uh, somebody else does. Here, yeah, I don't remember not, his name. It's not Dr. like X. Yes, uh, there you go, Mr. X. Dr. Oh, Lex Luthor, the actual Superman. Thought. But like, but he was bad guy, right? Yeah, I don't want to be bad. Guy. I don't want to be bad, Ralphie. No, no, nobody would believe it. You would be like the oh, there, shoot, somebody's got it. Charles, Charles Xavier. Xavier. That's, that's who I am. It. Yeah, I am okay. Charles Xavier. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Professor. I'm a wheelchair. No less. Professor Xavier. <laughs> I like that. Do that for Halloween. Just, like just steal some old lady's wheelchair and, and you'll be ready to go. Okay. So uh, that was fun, Ralphie. And, and there, so there's so many more tips and uh, those will be up tomorrow. And you get to hear Ralphie sing the Jacob's family song, which is so fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or scary. <laughs> But either, either one, you should go right. and listen. Thank you, Thank you, Tony, so much for your time. And his podcast is, again, The Virtual Couch. He has an Instagram feed. Yeah. And that, that episode will go up tomorrow with four more, four more from me and four more from Tony. And they're all really, really good. I love his approach of parenting. So you guys go and listen yeah. to him. Thanks so much, oh, Ralphie, for your time, thank Tony. You so much. This was a blast. A okay, we'll do it again. Okay, I, here's the old man of me. All here's right, the old man of me. How do I get out of this thing? Do I just, uh, you know, right, I'll play. I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> it's the X best. out. Okay, all right. Thanks, Ralphie. All right, bye-bye. bye bye. Bye. Compressed emotions flying past our heads and out the other end. The pressures of the daily grind. It's wonderful. Plastic waste and rubber.